On this channel, I talk a lot about forgotten languages. When I say forgotten, I mean lesser known, or perhaps they're dying, or perhaps they're not spoken to the extent they used to be, or maybe they're not spoken on a national level, but only in a region of a country. So most people outside of that country might not know about this language. However, one language branch I have avoided talking about is the Germanic languages, due to one of the languages of the Germanic branch being English. That is my native language and I don't find it so fascinating. However, I've been looking into Germanic languages and there are plenty of them. Many that are more forgotten, many that are not, and it's one of the most widely spoken branches of the Indo-European language family across the world. English being the main reason, of course, but other languages such as German, Swedish, Norwegian and Danish have plenty of speakers, as well as Dutch and Icelandic. But today let's talk about three Germanic languages that are lesser known. So let's get on with the video. So to start off, the first language we have today is a language which is spoken in Sweden. Now, first of all, I'd like to show you this flag. This is not an official flag, it's a proposed flag that was made by somebody online. Um, I think it's cool. <laughs> Hopefully maybe it will become official because this language, nor the people, nor the region actually have a flag. And the language in question is Elf Dalian. Now that sounds very much like a fantasy language, like with elves and stuff, but that is not the case. It's a language spoken in the Elfdalen region of Sweden, which is in the Dalekarian province. And if we take a look at the language itself, they call themselves Ufdalska. So the elf is just clearly something that sounds similar to uh, an English speaker, which is why it's being given that name. Well, it's actually called Ufdalska uh, and Elfdalska in Swedish. Now the language itself is North Germanic. It's in within the Dalekarian dialect group. So effectively what people know as Swedish and Norwegian don't really exist. It all comes from one language, Old Norse, and a bunch of dialects evolved. And Swedish is based off the dialect around Stockholm and Norwegian is based off well, there's actually two Norwegian standards, but one of them is based off the dialects around Oslo. But across both the countries of Sweden and Norway, you'll find huge dialect variations, as there's a dialect continuum. And the Dalekarian dialect group is actually closer to Norwegian than it is to Swedish. And within that, there's variation. Elfdalian has become a separate language of its own within the Dalekarian branch. Can I also mention that Dalekarian also has a unique runic script and until the mid 20th century this script was still used to write languages such as elf Dalian. it's been described as the last germanic stronghold for writing but we're not here to talk about that today so the language of elf Dalian itself has between 2000 to 3000 speakers so it's not very big there's a swedish mp called peter hellander pictured here Oh, sorry, that's the wrong picture, here, who started speaking Elfdalian in the Parliament of Sweden. And he started speaking about how it needs to be classified as a language and not a dialect of Swedish. The Speaker of the House turned around and said, look, you're only allowed to speak Swedish in Parliament. Stop speaking whatever language you're speaking. And his argument was, well, the Swedish government classifies this as a dialect of Swedish. If you can't understand me, then you need to classify it as a different language. Like, what a chad. This all happened fairly recently, happening last year. And it's actually how I found out about the language. I just found an article about this Swedish MP who stuck up for his own regional language, as he's from the Dalekarian region. Not specifically from um, the Alfdalen area of Dalekaria, but he is from uh, a nearby place and he, he does speak the language. And I thought it was quite interesting and I decided to put this on the list of today's video. So if we actually take a look at the language itself, we can see that this is its phonology. It bears resemblance to Norwegian more than it does to Swedish. And here is its orthography. But bear in mind it can also be written in this Dalekarian runic script that I discussed before. Finally, I have a text here. I found this on Omniglot 
I don't want to assume that it's the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. It doesn't look like it is to me, just given that how long it is. Um, Omniglot was not so kind to provide a translation. I cannot let you know what this says, but it's an example of the language nonetheless. As you can see, um, that's clearly not a dialect of Swedish, if you're familiar with any Swedish at all, which I'm not so familiar with it, but I definitely know what it looks like and what it sounds like. And to call this a dialect of Swedish just seems odd. You can just see how different it is. So let's move on to our next language now. Moving on to a West Germanic language now, we have Limburgish. Now, it's spoken in the Limburg region of the Netherlands and the Limburg region of Belgium. And if you didn't know, Limburg has this really cool flag. As you can tell from my videos now, I do quite like flags and I've been familiar with this one for a while and I really like it. And here's a map of Dutch Limburg and Belgian Limburg. Now, bear in mind that the language is not spoken across the entirety of these provinces, but all the dialects of the language are contained within. There's also Limburg speakers across the border in Germany as well. However, they're usually just treated as being a dialect of German. So to begin, the language itself is called Limburgs, which is quite easy to say. And it has 1.3 million overall speakers. So this is by no means a small language, yet, Limburg is no longer an independent country as it once was with the Duchy of Limburg so it's kind of marginalized within the countries of both the Netherlands and Belgium over standard Dutch and Flemish Dutch in Belgium. Here is a map of the spread as I said before it stretches into Germany though it's treated as a German dialect a low German dialect let me make it clear just like Luxembourgish is to the Germans and it is derived from Low Franconia, which is the same language which Dutch is derived from. It once was a dialect continuum across the Rhine River. However, these have diverged over time and become their own languages, such as Limburg. Now, if we just take a look at the phonology of Limburgish, we can see it's similar to Dutch, but they have some separate distinctions. First of all, they use a more German sounding R, Although this is also found in the Flemish dialect of Dutch, but standard Dutch would usually use an alveolar tap. They also make a distinction between G and R, and they also have these, which I went onto the IPA to try and see what they're pronounced like, and I do not feel confident in giving that one a go. And then they also have the distinction between a regular alveolar lateral L and a palatal L. And then here's their vowel system, which as you can see is very complex. They have many, many vowels. Another notable part of Limburgish is it contains pitch accent, which a few of the neighboring dialects across the border in Germany and parts of Belgium also have within their language. And pitch accent is kind of like tone, but not quite as developed as tones. So you can't really call them tonal languages. And other languages in the Indo-European branch do have pitch accent, such as Swedish, sometimes Slovenian, though not always, and Dutch. There are two dialects, West Limburgish, spe uh, spoken in Hasselt, and Central Limburgish, spoken around Maastricht. We have a text, for example, uh, of both of these dialects here, and it's the same text. It is actually the first sentence of the North Wind and the Sun, which is one of Aesop's fables I was previously unaware of. As you can see, they compare, they're definitely similar. From what I've read, they are mutually intelligible, so they are dialects. However, I'm not sure to an extent of how mutually intelligible they are with Dutch, for example. The bottom one, the central Limburgish Maastricht dialect, looks a lot more like Dutch to me than the top one. However, there's elements of both in which I can say they look similar. I don't speak Dutch, however. I have some experience in Afrikaans, but not Dutch itself. So let me know in the comments if you speak Dutch what you think of Limburgish. Can you understand it? Uh, which dialect is easier to understand? And do you classify it as a separate language? I'm not sure the political situation amongst Dutch speakers, um, whether they actually classes as a separate language of its own or not. It's had a separate history and development, but at the same time, 
a Dutch speaker might be able to understand this. So with that being said, we're going to move on to our final language of today. So our final language today is going to be another Northern Germanic language called Faroese. Once again, awesome flag. It's my favorite Scandinavian cross. And if you don't know where the Faroese Islands are, well, here's a map of the Faroes. But then here they are in relation to other Germanic languages. They're here stuck between Norway, Iceland and Scotland. The language itself is called Faroisk Mal. It has 72,000 speakers, which interestingly is actually larger than the population of the Faroe Islands itself. This is because many people who have grown up there move to mainland Denmark, as the Faroe Islands are a territory of Denmark, for better opportunities. It's derived from Western Old Norse, however, which is closer to Norwegian than it is to Danish. And this is because originally uh, people who you may describe as Vikings, although I'd rather use the term Scandinavian peoples, uh, ended up migrating to the Faroe Islands, as well as places like Iceland and the Shetland Islands, and they brought their language along with it. However, in 1380, Denmark entered a union with Norway, in which Denmark was the dominant partner in that union. And when Norway gained its independence again, it wasn't given the Faroe Islands back, even though it originally owned them. The dialects began diverging into a distinct language as early as 1298. And why do I give that specific date? Well, there's this text, which is called the Sheep Letter which is written in Old Norse, and an Old Norse so-called Viking from the west coast of Norway would be able to understand this. But it is understood to contain many words and phrases which seem to be uniquely Faroese, and which have survived into modern Faroese today. However, as I mentioned in 1380, when the Danish-Norwegian Union came into existence, all of the languages aside from Danish were effectively suppressed, which is why there are two standards of Norwegian today, Bukmal, which is based off a more Danish-influenced speech, and Nynorsk, which is based off a more Norwegian uh, basis of speech. And Faroese ceased to be a written language for over 300 years. Um, texts started appearing in the 1700s again. However, many of these were not written in any sort of standardized form and they looked more like Danish than anything else. And it wasn't until 1854 that a standardized script for Danish, which we'll take a look at uh, for Faroese, which we'll take a look at in a minute, was developed. And it's the one that's still used today. So as for the phonology of this language, we have the vowels and we have the consonants. Now there is a very complicated set of consonants here is quite different from Old Norse. It's had a lot of time to diverge. And if we take a look at its alphabet, which is obviously inspired of other scripts such as Icelandic and Norwegian, we can still uh, we can see that they still retain the letter ev. However, you'll notice if you go back here, there are no dental fricatives within modern Faroese. And this letter is now called et in modern Faroese. It's just pronounced as a T yet they still retained the spellings. Unlike Icelandic, however, they do not have the letter thorn. Finally, no language video would be complete without the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Now, I, sadly, I wasn't able to find this text for the other two languages we spoke about today, but I have it here. And as you can see, the letter ed, or rather et in Faroese, uh, it, it pops up quite a lot. But bear in mind, it does just represent a T in modern day Faroese. Unlike Icelandic, however, the letter, which looks like an O with a cross through it, uh, which makes an U sound in Danish, if I'm not mistaken, is present in Faroese, but not in Icelandic. I also compared the Icelandic and Norwegian translations of the same text to see how similar they are. And in the written language, it looks different, but a speaker may be able to read it, but if you listen to the audio recordings, they're completely different. So they are not mutually intelligible at all. This doesn't disadvantage people who live in the Faroe Islands, however, because most Faroese people uh, can also speak 
Danish fluently because they have to learn it in school. Some of them actually speak it as their first language and Faroese as their second. Some speak it the other way around. So they're not disadvantaged. And again, a lot of people actually end up moving to mainland Denmark in the end. At the end of the day, it's an interesting preservation of Old Norse, just like Icelandic is. Although it's developed so much to the point that it would be foolish to say that it is similar to Old Norse in the same way. So I hope you enjoyed this section and we're going to wrap this video up now. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found this interesting. There are certainly more Germanic languages that I can talk about in the future and I think I want to because I do find it interesting. Now, I have to apologise, though I do speak a Germanic language as my native language, that being English, I have much more experience in other language families such as the, or rather other branches of the Indo-European family such as the Romance branch. Um, the Germanic languages really aren't my strong suit. I've done my research into this video however and I hope that it was still comprehensive and gave you an idea of the variation of Germanic languages across Europe. That being that there's a split between North Germanic and West Germanic, there used to be East Germanic, languages like Gothic, however they went extinct a long, long, long time ago. And I hope it sort of shows the position of these countries, that they're not mono-ethnic countries, nation-states you might want to call them. For example, not everyone in the Netherlands speaks Dutch. There are Limburg speakers, there are Frisian speakers, and some of the dialects of Dutch are sometimes considered different languages. Some people say that the speech in Holland is completely different to the speech in Zealand. And the same goes for Sweden and Norway, with their dialects continuing. And a really interesting thing that uh, a couple of islands with a population of about 50,000 in the middle of the North Sea have a completely unique language of their own that is completely unintelligible with other North Germanic languages. So, I hope you found all that fascinating. Let me know if you want a part two, and I hope to see you next week. Yada!